Why did the ancients go to such trouble to build the megalithic sites, do you think? Well, that's the $64,000 question. Um, they clearly were motivated by um, sacred or religious uh, impulses. They wouldn't have just done it for uh, pragmatic reasons because there don't seem to be any. I know that there are people who think that they might resonate or, or emanate or whatever, but you wouldn't build so many megalithic remains all over the world just in order to resonate and to emanate. I think that, that's a very good point. Um, it is, it, it is without doubt true to say that there are a great many similarities globally in many of these sites, whether it's in terms of construction method, um, location aligning to um, geomagnetic faults, geomagnetic energy, uh, alignment to um, stellar objects, sun, moon, stars. Um, what for you is the most compelling explanation of the similarity? Well, there's no doubt whatsoever that many of these structures, if not most of them, are astronomically aligned, and, and the, the large rings are certainly um, connected to the solstices or equinoxes or both. Um, they have um, connections with the lunar motions. The, the people who were the megalith builders were very astronomically alert, and this was the big thing for them. It's hard for us in our modern urban world of today even to be aware of the fact that you can see the night sky. I mean, you can't see the night sky in many places today. Just go out anywhere and there's all this light pollution. But imagine a time when all they had were lamps and you could see the stars really bright. It's, it's an amazing experience. And um, they were attempting to be in harmony with the cosmos and to honor the cosmos. This was their tradition, their culture. There's no doubt about that. So do you think, given the, given the choices that are to, uh, given to us, essentially, which is that um, these cultures independently developed similar styles of architecture and alignment, or that they... Um, descended, for want of a better word, from a, a, a common parent culture, which would you plumb for? Well, I think that they're mostly connected because we have to realize that the megalith builders were a maritime culture and they were getting around in their boats. Interesting point about the maritime aspect of the megalith culture is how did they navigate so well? What I'm getting at is they must have been able to tack into the wind. They must have had something like fore and aft rigging. They can't have just had square sails. Otherwise, they could not have accomplished these maritime feats. Now, this interests me in particular because I wrote a book called The Genius of China, which is about Chinese inventions and discoveries over a period of 3,500 years. And amongst those was the invention of fore and aft rigging and the ability to sail into the wind. But it's become pretty obvious to me that the megalith builders must have been able to do this. But where's the evidence of this? And one of the things that really bothers me the most is what can we find out about their ships and, and their sailing techniques? And did they have rudders? Or did they still rely on those pathetic steering oars that most people had in, in the really old days? So, where was it all really coming from? Did they have center boards? What, how are they doing this? What, what was the nature of their sailing craft? I really would like to know so much more about that. And given that we're having trouble even now accurately dating um, stone uh, monuments, stone megaliths, stone sites, how much harder to go searching for contemporaneous, what must have been wooden vessels, which have long since rotted away, except in very exceptional circumstances, of course. So it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's a big challenge. <clears throat> we have a lot of rock art of early ships in the eastern desert of Egypt. Um, 